Hello there. My name is Peter Thompson and this is one of my top tip DVDs. And this one is about practicing. Practicing can be very important and it can also be almost a complete waste of time. I've heard many, many times that people should practice with a very whippy shafty golf club like this one. The theory, and I use the word theory on purpose, the theory is that if you can hit the ball with a very whippy shafty golf club then you've got a really good tempo. Well, we don't want that, we want to hit the ball. A whippy shafty golf club means this. Because of all the flex in the shaft, it bends all over the place, you'd have to swing really, really slowly to keep the shaft straight enough to hit the ball properly. And what is the point of doing that? What is the point? I could probably, or even maybe not, swing this club really slowly and not very far and get the ball to go straight. Great. It's gone about 50 yards. So why have a device with that much bend in it that makes you swing really slowly to keep the shaft straight? You want to swing the golf club quickly. You want a shaft that is stiff enough. I'm not saying stiff, but stiff enough so that it doesn't bend too much in the swing. So whilst these are quite popular, I personally don't like them. I've had this club, by the way, for more than 40 years. Yeah, way over 40 years. Old wooden head. See, it's wooden head. It's quite old. Not many of those around now. About 40 years old. And I bought it to prove the opposite to what it's supposed to prove. I bought it to prove that by practicing with this there is no advantage at all. There's an English king, King Canute, more than a thousand years ago now. All of his people in the country thought he had these fantastic magical powers. So they took him down to the sea and left him in a big throne I guess and they asked him to stop the waves coming in. But he was a pretty clever guy, he knew he couldn't do that. So when the waves came in and he couldn't stop them, he then said to the people that he did that to prove that he wasn't as good as they thought he was. He did not have magical powers, which was quite clever. They then saw him in a different light. This does not have magical powers. so don't use them. So the other I don't like is people put things on their left arm so that when you swing back your left arm is forced to stay straight. Well that's fine that means your left arm is straight when the device is on your arm but it doesn't take away the underlying problem, the underlying fault. The underlying fault is this Bending your arm, I think, is a bad thing. Put something on your arm so you can't bend it. It doesn't improve your swing. It keeps your arm straight, but it doesn't solve the problem. If you hinge your wrists correctly and lift your arms correctly and then turn round, your arm, my arm, won't bend. I've been hitting golf balls now for a long, long time and my left arm never bends. But I never try and keep my arm straight. I just don't. Watch Ben Hogan, Roy McIlroy, Tiger Woods, top of the swing, left arm straight. They're not trying to keep their arm straight. They're pushing the club away from them, turning round, getting their wrist to hinge, and the result of that is the left arm stays straight. 
Stand on your arm. Arm stays straight. Take it up again. The fault is still there. Your arm will still bend. Arm straight. Turn round. Arm straight. Hinge your wrists. Arm straight. Solve the problem. The initial problem. The basic problem. Don't try and find another gimmick to solve the underlying problem. These ideas are my ideas and I know they work because I've been teaching for 50 odd years, 54 years now and I teach people who've won the Australian Open, Kenyan Open, major championships, amateur championships and not once do I tr try and keep their left arm straight or get them to swing the whippy shuttery golf club. But if you wish to do so, that's fine. I just think they're both bad ideas. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much.